good. How are you? Oh, good, thanks. Good. Good. How are you? All right. Good. Thank you. Yes, very good, thank good. you. Good, listen. Tom Ahmed is serving a, a free match round. What, what, what's your reaction to him having to serve that um, Exactly the same as it was at the time. Um, uh, disappointed. We uh, know the player and we know the player very well. Um, we still feel um, at this stage and, and even then that it, uh, there was no intent in it. Hence, that's the reason why why we appealed. Um, so yes, very disappointed, but it's it's one decision's been made, and, and of course we have to get on with it. Where does it leave you in terms of attacking options for this weekend? Uh, well, we were light anyway with um, Sam Baldock being out, and of course Glenn um, not being available for for a good period now. Glenn trained um, this morning, um, which is of course a plus, and um, and what I have to do is I have to see how he is tomorrow and um, sort of some make some decisions uh, around that but uh, uh, but probably that's the only area that um, that we're a little bit light um, Sam Boulder also is back in training but uh, certainly hasn't done enough uh, and apart from that the only the only injuries we've got at the moment Steve Sidwell and and Kyle who's who's doing some good work and we're, we're hoping certainly hoping that he'll be training with us in that uh, at the end of that international break in terms of Glenn Murray, then, what are his chances of, of making it? Um, well, the, well, the decisions are uh, on an involvement because um, he has been out for um, a period of time, and of course, at this moment, we know that we're going to lose Toma for two more games after Sunday's game. So, so they're the decisions, of course, that um, that I have to make and. Uh, whether there's any risk, of course, that, that, that goes with that. But, um, but certainly it's good to see Glenn back out training with us again um, today and say I'll make decisions around that. You won your last two at home in the Premier League. Is, is the challenge now to get an away win? Uh, very much so. And um, they don't come any tougher than, than an away game at, uh, at Arsenal, irrespective of what form they're in or, or what, whatever time. Um, so yes, that's the the next challenge. We certainly we were delighted with our our performance, our level of performance at uh, at Bournemouth, and disappointed, you know, not to come away with with something. Uh, Watford, I thought uh, I thought we were good at Watford and and not so good at uh, Leicester. So yes, that's the next next uh, challenge for us, and um, it will be a, a very big challenge. Arsenal, of course, coming back from from Belarus. Not all the players who who went there. I'm sure we'll feature at the weekend, but but is that a factor that they have had this this travelling? Um, yeah, th what they would have done, of course, it's it's you know the team, the manager, and some players um, would have travelled. But I think the the large majority that um, that uh, that we think pr that will probably be involved on Sunday certainly uh, didn't travel. So um, so they're the ones that uh, you never know. You know, it's it's. It's the same as playing, you know, a, a midweek game, and you know we would have played certainly norm, numerous games, you know, last season where we came up against a team that, that would have played midweek. We would have had a free week, and it didn't work out that way, or didn't seem to work out that way at uh, the weekend, and vice versa. Um, you know, what they have got is is very good and very talented um, players, and and it shows by what they were able to achieve midweek. You know, the depth in the squad that they've got. With Newcastle, as a newly promoted club, you went to Arsenal and won 1-0 in 2010. Uh, yes, Andy Carroll header. Yes, I, I, I remember it well. Um, uh, but I think that's what the challenge is. You know, with the, the, there can't be anywhere in this division that you you can afford yourself the feeling that you can't go and get something you know and what we know is that on a, on a day like sunday we will have to have 
you know, things go our way, we will have to play to a, a really good level and, and probably, a, you know, an Arsenal team that don't don't play at their best. But um, that's the great challenges that, that that we have, and and probably, so, you know, there would be more pressure on the Arsenal to win that game than there would be from ourselves. And I think most wouldn't expect us to get uh, anything. And um, but that's the, the 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 great opportunity that we have. What have you made of Arsenal just lately? I mean, since conceding uh, four against Liverpool towards the end of August, they've now gone, I think, three Premier League matches without conceding a goal. Do you, do you sense they are tighter defensively than they were perhaps at the start of the season? Mm. They're a very, very good side with, with, with talented players. And, and generally, when they're on the back of a, a, a bad defeat or a bad period, they turn it around because of because of what they've got, and it's and it's never a coincidence of of where they are, you know, and the the the, the results that uh, that they get. Um, but they're able to do that because of the quality that um, that they've got, and and generally, if you've got that type of quality, you're going to do well, you know, more times than not. Given the the problems that you have with with strikers at the moment, I mean, what would you give for a fifty-two million pound striker? Like? Like I uh, well, um, uh, unfortunately, uh, I don't think we'll ever be able to do that. Um, but uh, but you never know. Um, but the reason why they pay these vast amounts of money for the particularly strikers is because of what they they produce, and um, he is a, he is that level of, of player. And I, I expect him to have a, a very good season in in an Arsenal team and the way that Arsenal play that will create chances for him but uh, but we know but we we are not in that league of of, of money or, or player and what we have to do is we have to work to to our strengths and 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 our strengths means finding a way of of staying in the game and finding a way of of coming away with with some sort of result 10 years ago Very much challenging for the for the title. Uh, they've not they've not won it since what, 2004. Do you, do you sense that they are not the the same team now that they were 10, 15 years ago? The the problem, of course, that um, that an Arsenal have is 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 not. I don't think it's anything to do with, with the club. I think it's to do with the competition around and and of course, you know, Chelsea have got. A lot stronger, you know, over these years. You know, so of of uh, Manchester City, your Liverpools, and what's uh, so you know probably uh, an Arsenal at, at their best. You know, it was an Arsenal and a Manchester United that were the two you know st stronger teams and stronger clubs in the division. You know, now there are you know five six teams that um, that are very much um, pushing for them Champions League spots and. And maybe another team underneath that one. So, I don't think it's just about uh, about uh, Arsenal. You know, over this period of time, I think it's the emergence really of, of some of these other clubs that, that I think have got stronger. How do you think that Arsenal has coped with all the, the pressure that he's been under, and pretty much the, the, the focus he's been under? He copes with it incredibly well because of the experience that, that he's got, and you know there's there's a different type of pressure. You know when I think when you are you know a smaller club in in the division or a new club in this division, it, you know the pressure is trying to get trying to get the results that are going to try and keep you in the division. You know when you are an Arsenal and an, an Arsenal Wenger, you know the pressure is always getting the results that you are expected to get. You know to staying in that Champions League, winning cups. So there wouldn't have been anything, you know, maybe the only thing he hasn't experienced, of course, is being at the other end of the table. But, but certainly he would have experienced everything that goes with the pressure of being a team that's, that's, that has high expectations. So, so he would be used to dealing with them all. And, and certainly for the amount of time he's been a manager at, at Arsenal, then he would have gone through every single one of them experiences. As a fellow Premier League manager, are you pleased that he decided to stay on? Um, yes, for the, for I think it's good for the league. I think it's good, good for, for football. He's an, an outstanding manager and, and has had a huge contribution to, to the game here. And um, yes, for that type of individual, you you want to see him here as as long as as long as he wants to be here. 
Uh, listen, finally from me, can I get your thoughts? You were Republic of Ireland International. Um, Kevin Doyle has decided to retire from all football because of the system headaches. He's, he's playing in, in the US at the moment. But, uh, what, what do you make of his decision? Uh, well, I, I heard about it um, the, this morning and the fact that he's made that decision, then of course it, it is the right decision. And I'm, I'm presuming, of course, that he would have made that decision on the back of, of good medical advice. And, uh, and of course, I think we are all aware that um, there's been a lot of tension, I think, over the last uh, few years as regards concussion and, and head in the ball. And, and I know that's, that there's a fair amount of research being done um, but I think when it's to do with your health and long-term health, then um, certainly it seems it's, it's a right decision. I'm pleased. The thing I'm pleased about for uh, Kevin is, is that you know he's had a very good career. I think he's 34 years of age now, and at least he's been able to go through that that career as opposed to being a a younger player. So, um, but certainly it seems like a, a a very good decision on good medical advice. Is it concerning in that this is a modern day footballer? It's not someone who was heading the ball in the 60s and the 70s when it was a very different, a very different type. Of um, yes, I think it's concerning, but but also I think we we have to get to the bottom of what the the full medical advice is and um and probably uh, you know until we know that then it's you know it's difficult to 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 relate it to one particular part of the game or or so but um but i'm i'm pleased that he's made that decision now and i say on on good medical advice does there need to be more from perhaps governing bodies clubs into mm. the links or possible links between Football and yeah, probably probably the answer is I don't I don't know. I know there is research that's that's going on. To what extent that research is, I, I mean, I don't know. So, you know, that being the case, it's you know it's very difficult to say. But um, certainly the research is the right thing. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, just a very quick one. We're going to be talking to David Cooper very shortly. So I was just wondering if you could sort of give me a, a bit of a, an idea of what sort of impact you think he's had on your side so far. You, you've played him in every game. In fact, I think he's played 90 minutes in every Premier League game so far this season. Mm. Uh, yes, he's made a, a big impact, and and probably he had a, a tough introduction. We we he wasn't a player that we brought early in the pre-season, so he wasn't able to do a, a lot of the pre-season games with with us. And 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 of course a tough introduction. You know his first game against Manchester City when you know you're going to be uh, very much up against it. Um, but I think from that game, I think he's he's developed really well. As a player that uh, that can play in two or three positions in in central midfield, it was probably tying him down really to how we we wanted him to play because I say he would have played in in various different roles in a, in you know holding position in in, in maybe a, in a four three three a more advanced one which we've seen him play of course for for Holland so he settled in very well. Thank you, Chris. In terms of your attacking options, we've spoken a little bit before about Izzy Brown. Um, when well, he's a nine and ten, and everything, where does he come into the reckoning in terms of options for you? Mm. Well, it's, it's uh, yes, it's, it's certainly it's an option for us. Um, uh, he's a, a very um, flexible forward player. Um, we um, brought him in as a, a very much as a as a ten, where he had played uh, for Huddersfield last season. Um, I think in his first uh, his first loan at uh, Rotherham, I think he played very much off the front. Went abroad, played on the left, and of course his first game for us, and uh, and also the pre-season game against Madrid was was on the left. So um, he is he has that versatility um, uh, in his game, but uh, certainly it's, it's an option for us. This weekend on Sunday as well, your captain Bruno, I think he's thirty-seven. Right. Uh, well, I know he's. Uh, I know he's I approaching. Don't want me to remind about it, probably. But what about that? Like, just a few words on him as a professional to be at that mm. stage, playing in the top flight of English football as an, as an outfield player. Mm. Well, I, I think if I looked as well as Bruno, then I wouldn't mind you uh, uh, being reminded. I wouldn't mind being reminded of that. He's the the reason why he's able to play at this uh, this level and play for as long as he has done is, is because. Of, of how he conducts himself, how he looks after uh, himself. Um, 
he's a very good footballer, and that and that's you know dramatically you know helps as well. Um, but very much as I say, it's, it's how he looks after himself. He's a model professional. Um, he's one certainly that the, the, the players very much um, look, look up to, and a, and a great mo- role model for uh, for for any player, but particularly for a player that um, that wants to play you know as long as possible. Just finally, in terms of the Arsenal game, arguably probably the, one of the big, say, six, eight games away from home, the first experience for that. How important is it for the players to be able to, I suppose, handle the occasion and not be in awe of it um, in, in terms of the actual occasion mm. and not just the players that they're playing? Yeah, well, th- this is definitely a, another type of challenge for us. If I look at the six games that we've had, we've had different types of challenges. The first one, of course, home to Man City that, that, that had had an outstanding pre-season and they've gone on to show in these six games you know how prolific they can be um, but yeah this would this would be the first I think of this type you know a top six team away from home and that that itself you know brings another challenge and um, we will certainly uh, have to be at a level to, to better get anything from the game.